Hello, welcome to the Roz Mops RTD channel. My name is Hayden Lewis, and uh, in an earlier video, I said I wanted to share some of my uh, college papers and essays regarding um, issues amongst uh, American Indians or Native Americans or Indigenous peoples or First Nations peoples. There's many, um, no, there's a lot of nomenclature on what people prefer, and it's all on a individual basis. Some uh, American Indians, or some some prefer American Indian, some prefer Native American, some prefer Indigenous, some prefer simply Native. So, um, before I read, um, forgive me ahead of time if any uh, ind Indigenous people, Native people, First Nations people um, get offended by any nomenclature I use. This is purely for academic uh, purposes and also spreading um, accurate history as accurately as I can uh, portray it. So if there's anything that you feel is uh, left out or inaccurate, please let me know and I will fix it. Thank you very much. So the first essay I want to share is titled Genocide Before the Word Existed. <clears throat> Let's begin. What is the meaning of the word genocide? According to the Merriam-Webster definition of the word genocide, genocide is the deliberate and systematic destruction of a racial, political, or cultural, cultural group. Can it be said that there has been a genocide brought up against the native peoples of North America? Yes, it can and will be said. Over 99% of native populations across the North American continent has been wiped out through the centuries of European colonization through deliberate and indeliberate means. Genocide of, of indigenous peoples, or otherwise known as American Indians, has been perpetuated through greed, bloodlust, thievery, and subterfuge. Subterfuge being like shady dealings, like kind of like betraying people, backstabbing them. <clears throat> Next paragraph. Smallpox had severely diminished native populations with some whole communities becoming barren and lifeless with no survivors. In the early stages of colonization of the North American continent, smallpox was often an indeliberate means of genocide. But it did not take long for European colonial authorities to realize their presence containing smallpox could be weaponized. During many displacements of natives, often enforced by the barrel of a gun, Blankets infested with deadly diseases such as smallpox were given to natives in the winter months of these displacements with a high death toll due to deliberate spread of deadly di diseases inflicted on native populations through colonial expansion. These displacements were breaking previous treaties and were enforced when Congress approved the Indian Removal Act in 1830, which had only been passed by a mere six votes. 103 to 97 at the time. Anti-native scourge General Andrew Jackson became President Jackson and became a figurehead in the removal and genocide of natives across southeastern United across the southeastern United States. <clears throat> and he was responsible for a lot of native peoples and people who supported natives' deaths and place displacements. The actions of President Jackson would carefully be studied by another evil man, Adolf Hitler. Hitler's treatment of the Jewish peoples throughout the Europe mirrors what President Jackson had done to the Muscogee Creek, Seminole, Cherokee, Choctaw, and Chickasaw peoples of the Southeast. If they were not killed, they were to be rounded up and sent off to Indian country, which is present-day Oklahoma. They would be sent on long marches there with very little supplies into unknown territory and immediately have to compete with other tribes for already scarce resources. President Jackson's anti-Indian sentiments flourished well before he made it to be president. Around 1813, Jackson had drove the Muskogee Creeks of Alabama south into Florida, which was controlled by Spain until 1821. Despite Florida being governed by Spain, Jackson would illegally march his armies and raise native villages to the ground, recapture escaped slaves, and kill natives and anyone suspected of helping his enemies, that being 
Seminoles and Creeks into Florida. So illegally marching into Florida when it wasn't even part of the U.S. territory. <clears throat> the conflict between colonizers and the Seminoles would last almost five decades, with the last of the Seminoles led by Abiaka going deep into the Florida wetlands and never surrendering to the aggressive U.S. government. Jackson was not the only person with authority who had anti-Indian sentiment. <clears throat> For a long time, there had been a culture of anti-Indian sentiment. Many people with high-ranking positions had anti-Indian sentiments and endorsed acts of genocide against natives. Colorado Governor John Evans gave instructions to kill and destroy as enemies of the country wherever they may be found all such hostile Indians. U.S. Congress, House of Representatives, 1865, page 47. In 1851, California Governor Peter Burnett called for a war of extermination to continue until the Indian race becomes extinct. Madly, 2008, page 309. This megalomania sets a precedence for Burnett's underlings to further enact genocide on natives. Governor John McDougall who followed Burnett as governor, echoed similar sentiments, stating that if negotiations with natives were unproductive, the natives would wage war, which would, by necessity, result in the extermination of many of the tribes. Madly, 2008, page 310. Yuki Indians of Northern California's Round Valley, present Humboldt and Mendocino counties, were severely decimated by this policy, losing tens of thousands of their population Baumgartner, 2005, page 34. Decimate is explaining this lightly, as decimation is rating of 10% of something, when in these acts of genocide, whole communities were erased and destroyed. The U.S. military also has a history of genocide against American Indians. On the morning of November 29, 1864, the massacre of Sand Creek happened when the U.S. 3rd Cavalry, commanded by Colonel John M. Chivington attacked Cheyenne Black Kettle's village, a chief, uh, while most of the inhabitants were still sleeping. Most of the village's men, women, and children were killed, and many bodies were mutilated by Chivington's men. Chivington lived th through this genocidal sentiment, stating, Kill and scalp all, little and big, that knits made lice. U.S. Congress, Senate, 1865 page 71 before this was another slot before this was another slaughter on January 29th 1863 Shoshone chief bear hunter bear hunters encampment was attacked with approximately 400 Shoshone people dead many of whom were women and children there were also countless reports of rapes against Shoshone women this event was known as the Bear Creek massacre the last act of American Indian genocide, and arguably the most memorable for those not as informed on the topic, is the Wounded Knee Massacre, December 28, 1890. <clears throat> a peace meeting, for, uh, forgive me, December 29th, forgive me. <clears throat> a peace meeting had been called between the Lakota and the U.S. Army. Before the meeting, the U.S. Army positioned Hotchkiss, Hotchkiss cannons at the encampment of the Lakota. No one knows for sure who shot first, but all hell broke loose and the Hotchkiss cannons bombarded the encampment with Lakota and soldiers in the crossfires. Situating and aiming the cannons at a spot where there is peace to be discussed leads one to believe the U.S. Army had ulterior motives on that day. Many of the surviving soldiers were given congressional medals of, of honor for participating in surviving a massacre of mostly unarmed men, women, and children. They were also called medals of dishonor by survivors of wounded knee. <clears throat> to say native people have been decimated is a major understatement. What has been perpetuated on them is nothing less than a systematic genocide in which many tools have been used to carry out this murderous agenda. To total nations being displaced, slavery, senseless killings, backstabbings, betrayals, and even deliberate spread of deadly infectious diseases the American Indian has been through many a tribulation, and many people today do not give it a second thought. Some of these 
less informed even believe that natives don't exist anymore or that they were conquered. That is the furthest from the truth. Natives de today deserve recognition of the past, good and bad. History is about accurate representation of the past, good or bad. And we must keep history accurate and truthful to preserve the truth and build a better future for generations to come. Native peoples of North America have been through so much many of us will never be able to fathom, and the effects of war and colonization have rippled through the generations today. The first step in the right direction is recognizing the wrongdoings to Natives by our own government in the past and present. We cannot simply forget, or it will happen again to another group of people. <clears throat> So, I will be sharing more of my papers and essays as time goes on. This is the first one I wanted to show you. Um, please let me know your thoughts on it, and uh, leave a comment below. Uh, like and share if you want to, <laughs> and uh, consider subscribing to our channel. And uh, thank you very much for listening, and remember, history is about accurate representation of the past, whether it's good or bad. And, and to shorten it, it's about the truth, and we must maintain spreading the truth so we do not repeat actions of the past and have more massacres and senseless killings in the future, no matter what group of people it is. So again, thank you very much for watching, and always have a good day.